Господин Вакнин, кога го правивме последното интервју со вас, светот беше преплашен од експанзијата и од бруталноста на исламската држава. Сега американската војска се повлекува од Сирија со образложение дека веќе нема опасност, дека веќе ИСИ се поразен. Како ја оценувате со стојбата на Близкиот Исток сега и дали на вистина помина опасността? Хепи Нью Ер, ту ју и ту ол дилисенерс. Тенк ју фу хевинг ми. ИСИС ја овез бин ен инсурджент organization, always been a terrorist organization. Its origins were in Iraq in 2003, that's how it started. The phase of caliphate, the phase of a state, um, was a very brief phase and not typical of ISIS. So ISIS went back to its roots, went back to its, ro its roots as an insurgent terrorist organization, nothing changed. It is still very much present in some parts of Syria, some parts of Iraq, and so it went back to, I would say, 2007, 2008. And it continues to be, to brutally uh, massacre people, to attack government institutions, to attack traffic lanes and transportation convoys. It constitutes a threat to many population centers and many uh, police and army units, um, government bureaucracy, and so on and so forth. The United States did not claim that ISIS has been defeated, it claimed that the Islamic State has been defeated. And that is quite true. ISIS has lost well over 95% of its territory and therefore is no longer territorially confined. But even the United States admits that ISIS still exists very much as a force on the ground. And that, w that is why the United States reached an understanding with Turkey that Turkey will invade Syria now and take care of what is left of ISIS. On the way, the United States, as it usually does, sacrificed its ally, the Kurds. And so the Turks are going to sweep away not only the, the ISIS militants, but they're going to sweep away the Kurdish resistance um, on the border with Turkey. Syria is in for a second round of instability, civil war and refugees. The war has ended the first phase, and entering the second phase. Председателот Трамп веќе е на половина од неговиот мандат, како и што се очекуваше, го поминува на контроверзен начин, но се чини дека него не му е многу гајле за критиките што ги трпи. Дали светот може да биде мирен со ваков американски председател? We grew up in a world with a single superpower, which was essentially the United States or bipolar world with the USSR. But this is a new development. Throughout human history, for well over 5,000 years, there have always been several competing regional powers, always. And we are simply going back to what used to be before Second World War. And even Donald Trump cannot stop this. Actually, what Donald Trump has been doing, he has been going along with history, rather than against history. I think, of course, he is not a great intellectual, and I, I'm not quite sure that he realizes what he's doing. But I think he is taking the United States along an inevitable path that any president would have had to take it. China is rising as an economic power, Russia is rising as a regional power and a military power, and the United States is declining in many ways and in many respects. And any president of the United States has to adapt himself to these realities, and that's what, what he's doing. He's doing it defensively. He is withdrawing the United States from the world. He is saying, we are big enough to survive on our own. We are self-sustaining. We don't need anyone. America first. The hell with everyone. I'm going to ignore everyone. I'm not going to collaborate with anyone. I'm going to cut uh, American military involvement. I'm not going to give money to anyone, etc., etc. These are reflexes and instincts. But ironically, they are right. They are correct instincts for the emerging world. Господин Вактин, последните неколку години живеете и работите во Русија. Како гледате на улогата на Путин во светската политика? Западот често гледа на Москва како на фактор кој прави раздори од Сирија преку Балканот па се до Украина. Раша е да бидете. Раша е да бидете втората суперпауер. Имедијатно после Сталин и вел во 1980-те. И тогаш Раша се колапсува, се имплодува, се дезинтегрира. And for, for about 10 years, no longer functioned as a unitary state. And then this gave China the opportunity to fill in the vacuum and become the second superpower.
So now Russia finds itself in a world where China and the United States are the predominant powers and it is in a third position and has to make alliances either with the West or with China, has to choose sides. Every country in the world within the next 10 or 20 years will have to choose sides. But I'm saying that Russia should be pitied because Russia never trusted China. There was a war between Russia and China, a military war on the border. Russia fully believes that China intends to take parts of the Arctic and parts of, the, of Central Asia from, from Russia. So Russia regards China as a much bigger enemy than the United States. And it is very sad that Russia has to choose between one enemy and another, not between a friend and an enemy, but between, between two enemies. Putin found, him, found himself in this position. Now, he cannot win. Russia cannot win. Anything they do, either they strengthen a quintessential enemy, which is China, which has been an enemy for hundreds of years, or they strengthen the West. And they have to choose between these two positions. And in the meantime, they are paying a horrible price because they are utterly dependent on oil and energy products. The price of oil again collapsed 6% last, yesterday only and is now again at around 40 to 50 dollars a barrel, depending on the type of oil. Uh, that means that Russia is deep in deficits, its economy is disintegrating, and I have no doubt that next year there will be massive social unrest in Russia. Putin is not threatened, but Putin is not threatened because there's no alternative to Putin. And because the elites around Putin are kleptocratic, they benefit a lot from stealing, and he allows them. He turns a blind eye to what's happening in Russia. But that can't last for long. Then there are two options. Either an alternative to Putin emerges, but I can't see such an alternative, nor does he encourage such an alternative. Or Putin continues to, be, to serve another term and another term and another term indefinitely. Or Russia begins a process of regional disintegration. We are seeing the first signs of this with the autonomy granted to Chechnya. Chechnya now is autonomous completely, as Kosovo used to be in Yugoslavia. So I think ultimately what will happen is that Russia will disintegrate into a series of regional alliances. And I think the process will start this year. В Европа актуални во последните неколку недели и месеци се така наречените жолти елеци. Како гледате нови феномен, нова движење и што може да очекуваме од него во последниот период? The yellow vest is just the latest manifestation of two converging trends. One is unprecedented, historically unprecedented, wave of refugees and migrants. The number of refugees and migrants in the world today is 67 million. That is twice as large as the number of migrants and refugees after World War II. It's the largest ever. And um, this is first trend. And the second trend is income inequality. The 100 richest people on earth have as much money as, as 4 billion people. And so a lot of the money goes into fewer and fewer hands. And not enough is left for all the rest. So there is an element of artificial scarcity. If you are a multi-billionaire and you have 10 billion, this 10 billion you took from poor, poor people and they don't have the money. So there's a lot of social unrest and social tensions built on this. Now the migrants are coming into relatively rich countries and they are poor. So they increase the ranks of the poor in these countries. They join the poor. They also can't find work they don't have the proper education, proper credentials. They rely on the welfare system, so they put a lot of stress on the state. And so it is a war between poor and rich, with the migrants on the side of the poor. And this is the two trends, what we are seeing today. It started not now, it started, I would say, about 15 years ago. But we are seeing, we are seeing the last few waves. Erdogan in Turkey is a manifestation of this, Duterte in the Philippines. Bolsonaro in Brazil, Putin himself in Russia, uh, Donald Trump in the United States, uh, Yellow Vest in, in uh, France, Brexit in the United Kingdom. All of these are a revolt of the poor masses against the educated rich elites. And the reason is that the elites betrayed the masses. The elites used their position, abused their position 
to steal from the masses, to steal from the people, to self-enrich, to and the masses are no longer willing to take it because they have reached a point where they cannot satisfy their most basic needs. We are entering another revolutionary period, like the period between 1789, French Revolution, and 1917. Exactly the same. And we are beginning to see the hints of these revolutions. Um, if you look back 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, or even 5 years ago, it was all legal. It was all, you know, done through the political um, system, through votes, through elections, through the media, and so on. Today it's done in the streets with violence and aggression. And again, as I said, it's only the beginning. На крајот годината што е зад нас ја одбележа и најавеното повлекување на германската канцеларка Меркел, која одбележа една епоха во Европа, веројатно најмоќната политичка фигура. Дали може Макрон евентуално да расследи како ќе се одрази тоа на европската и на светската политика? All the institutional, traditionalist, conventional politicians are no longer suited to the modern age, to the modern era. There is a new wave of politician coming. This wave of politician again is exemplified by Trump, Duterte, Bolsonaro, Erdogan, this type of people. They are highly narcissistic, they are aggressive, they are ignorant, they are ill-educated, they are violent, they, are, they use knowingly the poor and the uneducated against the rich and the educated. It is a war of the masses against the elites. In such an environment there is no place for civilized figures like uh, Merkel or Theresa May or Macron. In such an environment there is a place for proletarian figures, shall we say. And I think we are going to see a new, a new type of politics. The politics of the sword and the politics of the fist against the politics of the mind and the politics of the intellect. And I blame the elites because the elites have had a chance, a 150 year old, a 150 year long chance and they have betrayed the people. And when you betray the people, you're doomed, as the elites are going to find out. Господине Вактин, ви благодарам уште еднаш за ова инспиративно интервју. Thank you for having me.